Hi, I'm Andy Nolch, the host of the Kink TV show, and this is my Scientology vlog. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about New Slant on Life, a review of New Slant on Life, the book, uh, written by L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, it's a fantastic book. Um, it's probably uh, my second favourite book, um, my second favourite Scientology book, um, and maybe just second favourite book in general. Uh, I think I like Dianetics. This, this is a bit of a toss-up between Dianetics and um, and this, this New Slant on Life. I'm not really sure which one's better, but I both rate them as some of the best books ever written. Um, New Slant on Life is probably the second Scientology book I uh, ever read, um, and I just I instantly liked it. Uh, I give it five out of five stars. I think it's got great, useful information that helps you. And one of the things that was really big in this um, in this book, one of the really big things in this book that um, that I really like is it says how to become happy, right, or something like that. A chapter about happiness. And it basically, to me, it says that you got to pull your finger out. You got to, you know, you got to pull your socks up, and it's up to you to make yourself happy. You've got to work for it. You, it's you who makes decides if you're happy or not. And I think that's really true because a lot of people I see, um, especially on Facebook, you see people put statuses or whatever that they got problems or sadnesses and that sort of stuff, and it's just like. What are they doing about solving their problem? You know, and I'm sure they're doing some things, but they're really trying. They're really putting in the effort. I know a lot of people they just complain about things and they don't really, you know, set goals and actually try and achieve them. And when I read this back in 2010, I had had problems with depression, and I read it and I was like, yeah, I totally agree with that. That's how you. This is how you get rid of depression and stuff. You just start making your life happy. You start doing things you want to do. And recently, I'd started doing that. By coincidence, um, I'd start to cure my depression because I started doing the things I wanted to do and I started doing what it said in this chapter before I'd even read it. And that's, why, and that's what I, I found in a lot of the Scientology things I've read is that they're things that I was sort of already doing or already knew. And I read them and I was like, yeah, that's what I... It, it, it like, it clearly said what I agreed with. I was just like, yeah, I was already sort of doing that. Like, Dianetics, Dianetics the book, talks about the mind, and I was like, yeah, this is how I thought the mind functioned and stuff. So, like, it, I agreed with a lot of the stuff. And so it was really funny to read this book and read this chapter about happiness, and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing and it had been working. So when I read this book and when I read other Scientology stuff, I compare it to my life experiences, and I find that it's true. You know what I mean? Like that that's why I like Scientology because I just agree with it, it with a lot of its points, you know, probably not all all of it. Like I read Dianetics and it talked about prenatal engrams and I was like, well I have absolutely no memory of you know, memory before the age of 2 or whatever. So I don't know about that, but you know, a lot of the other things I agree with. Um just hold on a second. Ah, that's just my green tea. Um, yeah, so when I read this book, it was just, um, it really spoke to me. It really connected with me. Um, and I'll show you a, um, a little bit out of this happiness chapter, because I think it's its best chapter. Like some of the, I'll tell you what some of the other chapters are about. Um, two rules for happy living. So isn't that great as a chapter? Like it tells you rules to follow to get happy. You know what I mean? This, this is sort of stuff that psychologists need to read. Um, what is the basic mystery? You know, there's a, there's a basic mystery. Ooh. Um, how to live with children. It teaches you how to treat children, which is great. Um, marriage. Just information about marriage. It helps... Mar that can help married couples. Um, how to study a science. See, that's really interesting. It teaches you how to study science. See, this is the sort of stuff you need in schools. And that's what I thought with a lot of Scientology when I came across it. I was like, man, I wish I had this. I wish I was taught this in school. This is great information. All right, um, so I'll read out this this happiness chapter because I think it's really, really good. And it, oh. I'll read out the whole thing. Stuff it. All right, you ready? Is it possible to be happy? A great many people wonder whether or not happiness even exists in this modern rushing world. 
Very often an individual can have a million dollars, he can have everything his heart apparently desires, and is still unhappy. We take the case of somebody who has worked all his life, he has worked hard and he has raised a big family. He has looked forward to that time in his life when he at last can retire and be happy and be cheerful and have lots of time to do all the things he has wanted to do. And then we see him after he has retired and is he happy? No, he's sitting there thinking about the good old days when he was working hard. Our main problem in life is happiness, but I'll tell you more in a moment. The world may or may not be designed to be a happy one. It may or may not be possible for you to be happy in this world, and yet nearly all of us have a goal to be happy and cheerful about existence. You know, very often we look around at the world around us and say that nobody could be happy in this place. We look at the dirty dishes in the sink and the car needing a coat of paint and at the fact that we need a new gas heater, we need a new coat, we need new shoes, or we would just like to have better shoes. And so how could anyone possibly be happy when actually he can't have everything he wants? He is unable to do all the things he'd like to do, and therefore this environment doesn't permit a person to be as happy as he could be. Well, I'll tell you a funny thing. A lot of philosophers have said this many, many times, but the truth of the matter is that all happiness you ever find lies in you. Remember when you were maybe five years old and you went out in the morning and you looked at the day and it was a very, very beautiful day and you looked at the flowers and they were very beautiful flowers. 25 years later, you get up in the morning, you take a look at the flowers, they are wilted. The day isn't a happy day. Well, what has changed? You know they are the same flowers, it's the same world, something must have changed. Probably it was you. See, this is all talking about your attitudes, your attitude to life, you know? I'm not saying you can cure your problems or you can suddenly become happy fast, but you need to try and make it happen, you know? That's, what, that's how you, you know, things can be solved. Don't just give up, you know? I know, like, you, you don't get that much good advice from psychologists, no offence, but I, I, I just, I don't think that they sit down and go, this is what you need to do, do to cure depression. You know, take these vitamins, read these books, um, travel and blah, 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 increase your knowledge. Like, they don't, they don't do that. They're just going to just go, oh, just talk about your problems. And, oh, yeah, and, and it helps a little bit for someone to talk about their problems. But they don't really have a direct plan. Like they say to you, eat well. They don't even tell you what good food is to eat, you know. Anyway, actually... A little child derives all of his pleasure in life from the grace he puts upon life. He waves a magic hand and brings all manner of interesting things into being out in the society. Here is this big, strong brute of a man riding his iron steed up and down, and boy, he'd like to be a cop. Yes, sir, he would sure like to be a cop. And 25 years later, he looks at that cop riding up and down and checks his speedometer and says, Damn these cops! I understand. <laughs> Things in the uh, in the sixties weren't too much different to today. They're actually a lot better when it comes to these cops and speed cameras. It's crazy the police state they're trying to set up. Anyway, well, what is changed here? Has the cop changed? No, just the attitude towards him. One's attitude towards life makes every possible difference in one's living. You know you don't have to study a thousand ancient books to discover that fact. But sometimes it needs to be pointed out again that life doesn't change so much as you. It's you who change. Your attitude's not right to the whole situation. You had it right when you were a little kid. You need to go back to being a little kid again. You need to go back to being Peter Pan. You know what I mean? Spray um, twinkle dust in the air, pixie dust, woo, and float around. Do that. You know what I mean? Like put a positive attitude and a whole spin on everything. It's up to you, you know? A lot of people are like, oh, I've got these problems and stuff, and they're working like a terrible job, and it's just like, we'll get a new job. And they go, I'm not qualified to get a new job. We'll get qualified to get a new job. But I can't um, get the get the qualification. Well, blah, 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 blah. There's always a solution. There's like a million solutions out there. 
All right, anyway. Once upon a time, perhaps, you were thinking of being married and having a nice home and having a nice family. Everything would be just fine. The husband would come home and you would put the dinner on the table and everybody would be happy about the whole thing. All right, sorry, I just thought of a joke. I do that. It just come into my head. Anyway. And then you got married and maybe it didn't quite work out. Somehow or other, he comes home late and he has had an argument with the boss and he doesn't feel well. He doesn't want to go to the movies and he doesn't see how you have any work to do anyhow. After all, you sit home all day and do nothing and you know he doesn't do any work either. He disappears out of the house. He's gone. Then he comes back later in the evening and quite an argument could ensue over this. Actually, both of you work quite hard. Well... What do we do with a condition like this? Do we just break up the marriage or touch a match to the whole house and burn it or throw the kids in the garbage can or go to the mother? Or what do you, we do? Well, there are many, many things we could do and the least of them is to take a look at the environment. You know, just look around and say, where am I? What am I doing here? And then once you have found out where you are, why, try to find out how you can make that a little more habitable. Yeah, start doing shit to make things better. The day when you stop building your own environment, when you stop building your own surroundings, when you stop waving a magic hand and gracing everything around you with magic and beauty, things cease to be magical, things cease to be beautiful. Give you guys a bit of a breather. Other people seek happiness in various ways. They seek it hectically, as though it's some sort of mechanism that exists. Maybe it's a little machine. Maybe it's parked in the cupboard. Maybe happiness is down the next corner. Maybe it's someplace else. They, they're looking for something. But the odd part of it is, the only time they ever find something is when they put it there first. Now, this doesn't seem very creditable, but it's quite true. Those people who have become unhappy about life are unhappy about life solely and completely because life has ceased to be made by them. They've given up. Here we have the single difference in a human being. We have here a human being who is unhappy, miserable, and isn't getting along in life, who is sick, who doesn't see brightness. Life is handling, running, changing, making him. These are sort of people that are really negative. Like they just view everything negative. They turn on TV and they go, oh, just negative thing. And they always have these negative comments and stuff. And it's just like, there's also a lot of positive comments you can say as well. But they're just stuck in the negativeness. And here you have somebody who is happy, who is cheerful, who is strong, who finds that there is something worth doing in life. And what do we discover in this person? We find out that he is making life and there is actually a single difference. Are you making life or is life making you? You know, it's like a video game. Um, are you just going to go inside the game and get pushed around the game and not control your character and just get pushed around and go, oh, I've been shot and oh. No, you, you get the game, you get the character, you're in there, you play the game and you do things and you make things good. That's how you enjoy the game. If you just have your character on the screen and just let guns and bombs hit you and not play it, then you'll have a boring time playing the game, right? So get in there and play the game. Are you making life or is life making you? And when we go into this, we find out that a person has stopped making life because he himself has decided that life cannot be made. That's, that's all, yeah, that's totally true. They think that life cannot be made. That's bullshit. Life can be made. Like, th they just have false ideas, these really negative people. They've been through some bad experiences, and they go, you know, everyone's like this, or everyone, like, every man's horrible. You know, every man's bad. It's just like, no, that's not fact. Look at the facts. Yes. There might be a lot of men that are bad, but not every man's bad. You know? So they think life cannot be made. They think that life cannot be good. 
You know? That's not true at all. It's not true. Just, yeah, just because you have a few bad experiences doesn't mean it's true. Or even if you have a lot of bad experiences, it doesn't mean there's still that hope, there's still that chance, you know? Some failure, some small failure, maybe not graduating with the same class, or maybe that failure that had to do with not marrying quite the first man or woman that came along who seemed desirable, or maybe the failure of having lost a car, or just some minor thing in life started this attitude. A person looked around one day and said, well, I've lost, and after that, life makes him. He doesn't make life anymore. Now, this would be a very dreadful situation if nothing could be done about it. But the fact of the matter is that it is the easiest problem of all the problems man faces, changing himself and changing the attitudes of those around him. It is very, very easy to change somebody else's attitude yet you are totally dependent upon other people's attitudes. Somebody's attitude towards you may make or break your life. Did it ever occur to you that your home holds together probably because of the attitude the other person has towards you? So there are really two problems here. You would have to change two attitudes, your attitude towards somebody else and their attitude towards you. Well, are there ways to do this? Yes, fortunately there are. For many, many centuries, man has decided to know how to change, sorry, for many, many centuries, man has desired to know how to change the mind and the condition of himself and his fellows. Actually, man hadn't accumulated enough information to do this up to relatively a few years ago. This was written in the 60s. But we are making it a very fast-paced world. We are making it a world where magic is liable to occur at any time and has. Just on another point, if you think that you know, things can't change and things are, you know, this is all positive mumbo-jumbo bullshit and things can't be magical, let me just tell you this. You can bend objects with your mind. You can bend a spoon with your mind. Not a magic trick, not some slight slive hand trick. You can actually do that, okay? If you work on it, if you find out the information you need to know, um, look up Uri Geller. He knows how to do these sort of things. But this sort of stuff is possible because I remember when someone first mentioned to me about bending spoons with your mind, I thought, you know, yeah, I have to see it to believe it or whatever. But I was just like, oh, that seems like some positive mumbo jumbo bullshit. But no. It isn't. It's actual fact. And the CIA has got a hold of psychics, right, who can do these sort of things, and they pay them big money and they use them. And they've done scientific tests, experiments, proving that these people exist and they can do these things. And we can all do these things if we work hard and we do things like Scientology and other spiritual things, and you improve yourself, you can get into that condition where you're powerful enough to bend the spoon. You know? This stuff's possible. It's not bullshit. See how life's already getting fucking awesome already? Just by finding out this information? I used to think it was really boring and crappy and you couldn't do these cool things. But you can do these things. People spiritually, their body can be here and they have the spirit can float up in there and fly around like Peter Pan. They can do that. They can control and move around. Elwin Hubbard used to be able to do that. And I've met Scientologists who can do it. And there's, and there's lots of other spiritual people who can do it. This is fact. This has been proven scientifically by the CIA. And other, and other people scientifically. This is serious. And of course the CIA, if you look it up, will deny all of it because they don't want other people finding out this information because it's a really serious weapon in war to be able to do these sort of things. Dudes can leave their body, float around and check something out and come back and answer questions about that thing that they couldn't see with their eyes. They could they answer questions about that thing and they knew it and they were right. Anyway, so, you know, things are pretty cool. Things are looking up. Okay. Man now understands a great many things about the universe he lives in, which he never understood before. Amongst the things he now understands is the human mind. The human mind is not an unsolved problem. 19th century psychology didn't solve the problem, but that doesn't mean it has not solved the problem. 
In modern times, the most interesting miracles are taking place all across this country and across other con continents of Earth. What do these miracles consist of? Hold on, speaking of these things that were about moving objects and stuff, I remember hearing stories about, in the 50s, people who started to get involved in Scientology and stuff, and they would do a course, and in order to pass the course, one of the tests was they had to be able to knock the hat of someone off their head with their mind from a distance. So you look at someone with a hat on and to pass the course was a test that you had to knock that hat off with your mind. And people passed the test and passed the course and could do it. Amazing. These things are possible. It's not possible when there's fluoride in the water. It's not possible, you know, when there's chemicals in the water. It's not possible when people have been pumped when they're little kids full of vaccines that are brain damaging them. This stuff is seriously going on. You've got to wake up to what's going on in the world. Anyway, when, when you've got someone who's got ADD or some sort of autism for the rest of their life, you know, they're going to have problems doing these sort of things. Or you've got someone who's eating heaps of junk food and um, is working a miserable job and is unhealthy. You know, they're not going to be able to, you know, bend a spoon with their mind easily. They've got a long way to go. But if you live healthy and you do all this spiritual stuff, you can get there. What do these miracles consist of? They consist of people becoming well when they were ill. Incurably ill. Incurably ill. <laughs> Sorry, just sort of another joke. They consist of people who were unhappy becoming happy once more. They consist of abolishing the danger inherent in many of the illnesses and many of the conditions of man. Yet the answer has been with man all the time. Man has been able to reach out and find this answer. So perhaps man himself had to change. Perhaps he had to come up to modern times to find out that the physical universe was not composed of demons and ghosts to outlive his superstitions, to outlive the ignorance of his forebears. Perhaps he had to do everything, including inventing the atom bomb before he could finally find himself. Gosh, I'm rambling on, aren't I? Hope you like this chapter. It's the only one I read of the book. It's good. Well, he has pretty well mastered the physical universe now. The physical universe is to him rather a pawn. He can do many things with it. And having conquered that, he can now conquer himself. The truth of the matter is that he has conquered himself. The religious philosophy of Scientology came about because of a man's increased knowledge of energy. Man became possessed of more information about energy than he had had before in all of his history. And amongst that, he came into possession of information about the energy which is his own mind. The body is an energy mechanism. Naturally, a person who cannot handle energy could not handle the body. He would be tired, he would be upset, he would be unhappy, and he looks all around him to find nothing but energy. If he knew a great deal about energy, particularly the energy of himself and the space which surrounds him, he, of course, would know himself. And that, in the final essence, has been his goal for many thousands of years, to know himself. Scientology has made it possible for him to do so. All right. Great chapter, really good chapter. Um... And there's many other chapters that have just interesting... There's a third-party law, which is a really interesting law that exp explains how wars get started between two countries. Like, there's a third-party law. Um, and there's, I think there's a little bit here that talks about evolution and how, yes, we did evolve from lower organisms and stuff, but that's not the only answer. There's more going on to evolution. There's lots of things about evolution that can't be explained. There's a lot of anomalies that are unusual. All right? It's not just that some magical explosion happened and these things evolved from mud and suddenly there comes man. It was a bit it was a bit more unusual than that. There's lots of strange things going on with evolution, but yes, there was some evolving going on a speed and animals changing from one species to the other, and I think Charles Darwin is a genius in what he discovered. I think it's a really great idea the whole natural selection thing. But there's more to it. It's not completely there. So if you want to get this book, New Slant on Life, I totally check I totally recommend getting it. 
Um, and there's this here is a version from the 90s, and here is a version from uh, a modern version. Now, the Church of Scientology is a whole nother thing when it comes to Scientology. It's a whole nother ball game, okay? But let's just say the church has been corrupted. And since LIH passed away and other top Sea Org people who um, LIH worked with after they left, things started going pretty down in the church. And what the church uh, did is they re-released his books and they re-released re bad versions of the books. They said that they were correcting them and they are making the covers nice and stuff because see how the cover looks nicer. But this is all icing and no cake. You know what I mean? This has some chapters similar to this, but this has a lot of good information missing out on, missing out of it, and it's been screwed up. So I wouldn't recommend getting this version, but this is still something good, but I wouldn't recommend getting this. I think you can download these, these for free on the internet. You can download um some, like original Scientology books for free on the internet. Try and find any Scientology or L. Ron Hubbard books that were issued, published when he was alive, so like before the 80s. Okay, don't get stuff from the year 2000 or from year 2010. Um, so yeah, this one's got a lot of great information in and I totally recommend getting this one and not this one. Um, and for you people who are listening who are involved with the church, right, um, find out the truth about the organisation that you're involved in. Find out that they are actually squirrelling the tech. RTC is actually squirrelling and changing Aaron Hubbard's writings and making them worse. And that's why I left the church. And um, this was a big. This book to me was a big wake up call to what was going on in the church because I read this version and I read this version, and I was like, "What the hell? This book hasn't been improved. This book's been made worse. They're not corrections. They've been screwing it up." Anyway. That's a whole other kettle of fish, and there's another video I've probably done about that that you can look up. But um, you, this is a book that every human being, every human being has to read. This has so much useful information in it, and it makes things a lot better. So check it out. I give it five stars. New Sign on Life by Elrond Hubbard. If you want to see more videos about Scientology, um, just check out my channel. Um, and if you want to see funny videos and stuff, check out the King TV show, just search it on YouTube.